your hygiene partner introducing new safeguard 100 grams rupees 175 only Hello there, very good evening and welcome to Prime Time News on TV1. We're coming to you live and direct from our News Fair studios here in Colombo. Let's start off with a look at your top stories tonight. Water cannons and tear gas on IUSF protest march against suppression. Sarah Ponseca joins IUSF protest march. Gas and cement prices drop but wheat flour and milk powder prices up. Marika exposed fraud in crude and refined oil imports. Opposition pushes Charida Herat into COPE. 30% tax on export companies and agreement with the IMF. Revelation at COPA. CID chief summoned to parliament for allegedly tapping Partley's phone. Starting off with your top story tonight, an Inter-University Students' Federation protest march joined by mass organizations that were staged in Kalania was met with police, water cannons and tear gas opposite the University of Kalania today. An Inter-University Students' Federation march joined by mass organizations against suppression commenced from the University of Kalania premises on Tuesday afternoon. However, as no approval was obtained six hours ahead of the scheduled start of the protest march, Sri Lanka police on two separate occasions informed the group to disperse. However, the protesters disregarded the notifications and attempted to proceed and were met with police water cannons and tear gas. Thereafter, they proceeded close to the University of Kalania to protest again. Political representatives and activists joined the protest later on. Rani Rajapaksha, who's sitting there without a mandate, won't last long. Try to recall what happened to those officials when they lost the power. Political forces try to suppress the people using people with uniforms. Even with regret, we will have to tell them that they will face the consequences for their actions. They will be put in the same jails which they are trying to put these youth. Our country's future is in danger. And in order to restore her, we have to start writing a new chapter of this country. This country has no future without an Aragalaya. Sri Lanka's Human Rights Commission, referring to Vasantha Mudaligay's detention, stressed that no citizen shall be discriminated on the grounds of political opinion. The Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka advised that Sri Lanka police should act with responsibility and take all necessary steps for the protection and safety of Vasantha Mudaligay, a suspect currently in detention. 
Today, Sri Lanka's Human Rights Commission said that every single person is entitled to equal protection of the law. It added that no citizen shall be discriminated on the grounds of political opinion. Samagi Janabalavegia parliamentarian SM Marikal revealed a series of questionable transactions that had taken place in recent times. The president, who was also in parliament today, got involved. The premium for a barrel of crude oil is approximately 35 US dollars. I will elaborate on how the payment is made. The company called Coral Oil placed their bid stating that they would import only Brent. However, they imported what is called Siberian Augustus. At the time of imports, the world market price was between 74 and 76 US dollars. However, since they bid for Brent, the price was 103 US dollars with a premium of 8.25 USD. The loss alone in importing 80,000 metric tons of crude is between 25 to 30 million US dollars. Who looted this money? Here is the tender bid document. On the 25th of July, Ceylon Petroleum Corporation awarded the tender to Coral Oil for the Brent price with a premium of 4.98 USD. However, four days later, on the 29th of July, the minister puts forward a cabinet paper increasing the premium to 8.25 US dollars. That is an increase of 3.35 US dollars, thereby awarding a direct and indirect advantage of 35 million US dollars to this company. But Sri Lanka does not have money to even make an advance payment. Therefore, those who offer credit are forwarding unsolicited proposals. The people need to know the gravity of the situation and how deep these unsolicited proposals are. If a low bidder comes forward, they must be awarded 10% of the sum. Then the central bank says, we do not have the money and we are in default. Thereafter, the main dealer says no to the advance and requires payment via the NRA system. That means a non-resident account. The Coral Oil also requested payment in that system. So the central bank, which does not have money to pay the 10% advance promises to make the payment in US dollars within 30 days. Then the CPC deposits 115% of the petroleum value in rupees. The central bank converts the money to USD after shipment is received. Thereafter, a premium is also paid. The governor of the central bank must respond to this. How is it that the central bank that could not source dollars on day one make payments in US dollars within 30 days with the premium? Approximately 1.2 million US dollars is obtained as a bribe from every single shipment of refined fuel. If four vessels reach Sri Lanka, that's approximately 8.3 million US dollars. Who are these people? Is the central bank governor unaware of this? Who is money? The local agent of Coral Oil. This person has sent an email to the CPC. Who is this person? How can the minister and the CPC agree to such things without calling for tenders? How is the central bank governor preparing the payment? plan for US dollars. They are looting 8.4 million US dollars per month from refined fuel. At a time when the children are malnourished, three-wheeler drivers are finding it difficult and mothers are unable to feed their children, this type of looting should be considered a national crime. The premium for a litre of diesel is 32 US dollars. The premium for a litre of petrol is around 25 US dollars. Where is this money going? There's no point in tweeting every day because you're losing followers. We must take this matter to the courts. The ideals of the Aragalea have not faded away. The next Aragalea will come from the people who are in hunger and not the middle class. The police and the military will not be able to stop it. The MPs on that side said Ranil Vikramasinghe is the man in the bond scam and it is he who brought Arjuna Mahendran. When visiting Japan, the president had a transit of six hours in Singapore. The newspapers said he met with the Singapore ministers. 
However, we are told that he had lunch in Singapore with Arjuna Mahendran. I would like to state that I had breakfast with the minister. I had lunch on the Singapore Airlines flight. I had lunch after I boarded the flight. I can show you the menu as well. I am disappointed that MP Marika is making a false statement. Marika also said that the middle class will bring an Argalaya. This was previously mentioned by Hiranika Premachandra. I am happy that both of them are thinking alike. I do not agree. It is clear that MP Marika is following the footsteps of Hiranika Premachandra. I spoke of something in the media. When you were my leader, you were aware that I would never follow the footsteps of Hirunika. <laughs> the Petroleum Distributors Association announced that they will refrain from fuel distribution services on Tuesday in protest of the attempt to recover 45% of the discounts provided for the operational charges already paid. The CPC Managing Director has issued a letter to recover the 45% commission that was already given. The monies were taken by the CPC on the very same day this letter was issued. Distributors have lost around 30 to 40 million rupees. Given this situation, filling stations cannot source emergency funds to place orders. Around 200 to 300 filling stations have their money slashed as fines. Those who are to make the payments are aware of this and they too have decided not to make any deposit. Minister of Power and Energy Kanchana Vijay Sekara stated in a tweet on Monday that there will be no disruption to the fuel distribution process. The minister also asked the public not to be alarmed by misleading statements. The Sri Lankan government has declared a number of essential services via an extraordinary gazette on Tuesday including the supply or distribution of petroleum products and fuel. Several Petco filling stations in Colombo and the suburbs had run out of fuel by Tuesday morning. Long queues were witnessed at Sipetco and LIOC filling stations that had fuel stocks. Most filling stations do not have petrol. It is said that there is no shortage. I came here from Rajagiriya and every filling station along the way had no fuel. The fuel queues are back. By December, they said they will run out of fuel. They have lost everything. They bring taxes as they want and pass them in parliament. People are always helpless. Some Sipetko filling stations in the Kurunagala town also did not dispense fuel on Tuesday morning. Some filling stations in Gaul and suburbs also had run out of petrol on Tuesday morning. There was no fuel at most of the Sipetko filling stations in Kandy and queues were seen at Lanka IOC filling stations. However, Ceylon Petroleum Private Tankers Owners Association stated that only pre-ordered stocks of fuel will be distributed. Our correspondent stated that a limited number of fuel bouses were dispatched on Tuesday. Fuel distribution from the Lanka IOC terminal in Trincomalee continues as usual. Parliamentarian Professor Charitha Herath, who was removed from the COP members list by the ruling party, was pushed back into the COP committee by the opposition leader today. This appointment was made after Dr. Harsha De Silva, who was appointed to the committee by the opposition, announced that he will step down from the COPE committee. 27 members of the ruling party and the opposition were nominated for the Committee on Public Enterprises of COPE yesterday and former COPE chairman Professor Charitha Herath was removed from the list by the ruling party. The COPE committee had to appoint new members as a result of the president's move to prorogue the parliament on the 28th of July. COPE that was chaired by Professor Charitha Herath was digging deep into many serious matters before it ceased to function and had to be reappointed. The ruling faction led Led by the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, nominated 17 MPs to cope, excluding Professor Charitha Herath. Jagat Pushpa Kumara, Janaka Vakumbura, Lohan Jatwatha, Indika Andruddha, D.V. Chanaka, Shanta Bandara, Mahindananda Aluf Kamage, Rohita Begunavadana, Nimal Lanza, S.M.M. Musharraf, Sanji Vedrimana, Jagat Kumara Sumitra Rachi, Prem Nazi Dolavatta, Upal Mahindra Rajapaksa, Rajika Vikramasinghe, Madhura Vitanage and Professor Ranjit Bandara were appointed by the SLPP.
cope committee to water upper within you we had proposed harsha de silva to cope he voluntarily stepped down at this time we are announcing that we are proposing charita hera who served as the chairman of cope for that vacancy mathe dumawa api yojana karana ay kinaka me avasthave prakasha karanawa hatali sundene 43 people moved out from the ruling party and started working as independent members of the opposition none of them were included in this committee now we are not going to talk about those who have been brought instead because it will cause some harm to those people e pudgelanta man yam haaniyak karana nisa e wenuwata ara cope includes the henchman of the man with seven brains he is deciding the commission of cope that means he is selecting cope members from the us it is shameful if matters are taking place according to the whims of that person ne e gana lajjai tapu ya annuwe etokata bola hata anuwa kiyala mandri warek naha ne cope come to the poke come to the kiyala oda man dakka thiyena facebook e post ekak dala cope come to the poke come to the kiyala hala thibba me etenta wattanna epa garu kotha nayak thuni meka e ekama mantri wara ekama karanawat nakidna nam me sabawa api paksha nayaka rasseen thiyala niyaya patra adala ema geniyanna bae mama api lansa mathumath eka pedlinne yanne nae mama kiyanne me sadharane garu kotha nayak thumuni niwaradi karan man danna vidiya As far as I know, Ranjit Bandara, who is seated at the end, has been instructed to make has been instructed to be made the chairman. According to the instructions given by the seven brains, the commission is made in such a way as to get the necessary votes to do so. एक संयुक्त यह दलती है। दायसिरी जैसे क्रम तो आप तोपिये दागा। Minister Dayasiri Jayasekhar Dayasiri put the hat on his head, thinking I was speaking of him. Although he is more senior than me, I think you are a fool because in this house there is clearly the ruling party and the opposition. Either side proposes members. I want to make it very clear that we are working from the opposition. We don't want to be puppets of the ruling party. I do not have my sons in the president staff. I believe that the idea expressed by former minister Vimal Virvansa will be removed from the Hansard. I am nobody's puppet. I'm a professor with a real professorship. Remember that. Tanaturat tiya gan, ekamata katiya gan. Professor Ranjit Bandara, I did not call him a puppet. Generally speaking, you call it a slave. I don't like to use the word puppet in relation to you. There are such resident professors as well. Obatuma sambandhi. Ema antebasik mahacharya varu tinno. Opposition parliamentarian Chaminda Vijay Siri believes that it is time to call for an election. as the country is not in a position to move forward the fraud and corruption committed by the group that ranil vikramasinghe has joined with is discussed at the united nations human rights council as well it is clear that the global community will not support the programs of the group of thieves led by the sitting president ranil vikramasinghe must pave the way for the formation of a new government and a new parliament do not make the people feel helpless we call on you to call for elections the people also expect that we request you to give us the opportunity to move this country to a place where the people will have a better future sugatiyak yaha pata gena puluwan tenata apa rata giniyanna avasthawa denne kiyala mama awasan karu gambadda an initiative for the people by the people The sixth phase of the Gum at the Door to Door program will begin tomorrow and the program was launched today at the premises of the Capital Maharaja Group. The sixth edition of the Gum at the Door to Door program was launched today in the midst of religious observances. The Gum at the Door to Door program is joined by the University of Peradeniya as well. Gum at the is well known among all sri lankans young and old as the people's force that brings about a new beginning for the villages and towns of sri lanka gamadda implements these projects by identifying the real needs of the local population the needs of the people were identified following an extensive and streamlined study of the findings in the gamadda door to door program that was implemented five times before along with the university of peradeniya The COVID-19 pandemic and the economic crisis have forced the people of Sri Lanka to undergo various hardships. Gamadda is ready once again to identify the socio-economic issues of the people of Sri Lanka. The 6th edition of the Gamadda Dotodo program will commence from Jaffna, Mathale and Kaluthara districts tomorrow. Are the prices of goods in Sri Lanka increasing or decreasing? We'll bring you the details after this short commercial break. News first. Main sponsor. Sapura 
ሁሉና ጋልን ሜሳት ወደ ሰራክሽ ተከራኒ እስላም ኢንሳይድ እስላም ጂቪአይ ቻሌ ጂቪቲ a trusted place for your fixed deposit valuable fd 25% for 2 months 25.5% for 4 months valuable fd the symbol of stability welcome back to the news price hike tuesday also became price drop tuesday here are the developments that took place today the price of the locally manufactured milk powder will be increased for midnight today accordingly a 400 gram packet of milk will increase by 100 rupees and a 1 kilogram packet of powdered milk will increase by 230 rupees at the same time the alsalon bakery owners association said that wheat flour companies increase the price of a kilo of wheat flour by 13 rupees The complete demand of wheat flour in our country has been supplied by two wheat flour companies. These two companies have increased their prices by 10 rupees since last morning. The agencies that distribute flour have also increased the price by 3 rupees since last morning. A kilo of wheat flour has been increased by 13 rupees. Litro Gas said that the price of a 12.5 kg domestic gas cylinder will be reduced by 200 to 300 rupees with effect from midnight tomorrow. In C Cement Sri Lanka announced that it has decided to reduce the prices of two types of cement to benefit the country's construction sector. Accordingly, a 50 kg sack of In C Sansta and NC Mahavali Marine Plus cement will be reduced by 100 rupees with effect from midnight today. At the sessions of the Committee on Public Finance yesterday it was revealed that an attempt was being made to impose a 30% levy on export companies. The Committee on Public Finance met to discuss matters relating to the awarding of tax concessions to an Indian company. under the imf agreement as far as we know we haven't been maybe the secretary can uh, deputy secretary can uh, enlighten us what we understand is that even export companies will be taxed at 30% if that is the case i want to know uh, mr secretary mr deputy secretary if that is coming you already signed the staff level agreement you are coming to us now and asking for 12 years tax holidays for a particular company now what i want you to justify is why and on what specific basis are you requesting us to do this well the well this particular company stands out among the you know big giants in the world and if you were to have them here yeah answer that question mm -hmm. sir, sir, i have no, one sir, line no, question there are other reasons Excuse too if me, i may sir. Yes, sir. i have one line question because i am not an economist they are coming as a big Five, uh, fortune 500 company mm -hmm. what will be their investment what will be the tax if we tax them as normal okay there is an x amount we are foregoing that that foregoing amount is that worth by bringing are you sure that foregoing amount is worth for us because there will be other investment following now you are giving me a quantitative just a qualitative statement I this is exactly how things are happen no uh, you know the, this investment is when you look at it 10.25 i you ask the same question yes. it's not from me you know previously uh, my predecessor has approved this thing but i had to defend this argument he's here it's only 10.25 we normally the boi approved projects it projects with only 150000 no, mr US chairman dollars. let me be direct with threshold. you mr chairman we have sat in this committee for now number of years <laughs> somebody came and told us that they are going to reduce taxes right and then you know that there would be you know massive growth that would happen after the tax reduction now there is a acceptance that there was no proper analysis before that tax reduction was done and the state coffers lost about 500 to 600 billion rupees and that perhaps uh, was the catalyst to this catastrophe that we are facing today the honorable uh, mp is asking you a simple question what is the tax that you are going to forego if they were taxed at the current rate as opposed to the tax rate that is going to be introduced by you which is 30% how much are you going to forego is the question yes so now Please. the these services are tax 0% tax so there is no forgone as at present well in you know, the 3 and a half months there was nothing i mean aragali and all that you know there are so many issues i think no, the staffing these and are all irrelevant on yeah, the i know uh, i mean honorable minister yeah. um, mp this is irrelevant no because is there anyone here in the boi and the 
the finance ministry who can give us the answer how much of tax exemptions are you asking for from this committee what is the amount how much do you want us to approve until you questioned about this we were not aware about this 30 percent levy we carried out this thinking that zero is the base value Aren't you all aware that the government is trying to impose this 30% levy? If the income tax is zero, then why are you all requesting us to wave it off? Income tax is zero now. I hear that you income tax is wave karan illa ni. Views were expressed on the Strategic Development Act in Parliament today. Now I think that the Strategic Development Act is primarily flawed. If we are getting foreign investment into this country, there are mainly three reasons. One reason is we need the foreign exchange so that our foreign reserves will go up. Secondly, we need basically jobs to be created in this country apart from domestic industry. Thirdly, we need to make sure that we get government revenue. But Thirdly, we have not been able to get government revenue. We stand for a social market economy. This country is on the verge of having street riots and other issues if the government is unable to address the problem of the poor. Because the rich are rich, but there are millions of people out there who are struggling to make a daily living. Most of the projects approved under the SDA are mixed developments and apartments. I'm asking for whom are these projects? At least the poor and the citizens of the country must have some benefit from this. What we need is to simplify the tax system in this country and create a better environment. That's why we brought an Inland Revenue Act. Here I would like to make a request, Cheva, that is approving this body, to urge this company to set up their firms to create employment opportunities outside of Colombo as well. Uh, as you see, with the IT industry is an industry that's booming, but however, uh, a starting salary that an IT staff would get uh, in Colombo uh, is not enough for somebody from Jaffna, Batiklo, or Hambantoto, or even Mondragala to come and work in Colombo for the starting salary that they get paid. So there are many IT graduates who have the theory, the experience, the theory, and the knowledge through university education, but however, they unfortunately, they don't have the practical experience to find themselves a job in Colombo. There's a second bill uh, that's here today. It's about the Import and Export Controls Act, where there are certain items are being given exempt. However, these, these sort of exemptions and import regulations will not help this country come out of this crisis. The director of the Criminal Investigations Department has been summoned to Parliament over an alleged phone tapping incident. The Director of the Criminal Investigation Department has been informed to appear before the Parliamentary Committee on Ethics and Privileges on the 18th of this month. This is in relation to an investigation on a complaint made by parliamentarian Partly Champika Ranavaka where he claims that his phone was tapped. Chairman of the committee, Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa, said that the Director of the Criminal Investigations Department will be summoned before the Parliamentary Committee on Ethics and Privileges for violating the privileges of a parliamentarian. The World Food Programme in its report for September 2022 said that the highest level of acute food insecurity is in the estate sector. The World Food Programme has highlighted the tea production sector as having the highest level of acute food insecurity in the estate sector. It also recorded among female-headed households, households with no education, Indian Tamil population and Samudhi Programme beneficiaries. The World Food Programme said that food and livelihood related coping strategies are being widely adopted including cutting the number of meals consumed in a day, reducing meal sizes, spending savings and purchasing food on credit. As households exhaust these strategies, most of them are likely to engage in severe means of coping with negative knock-on consequences for food security over the medium term. The World Food Programme warned that the situation is likely to deteriorate during the lean season from October 2022 to February 2023. Immediate food assistance and livelihood programs are essential for moderately and severely acute food insecure populations, including through existing social assistance mechanisms to improve household purchasing power to access nutritious food. Amnesty International says that human rights complaint recovery measures are critical to stop spiraling hunger and poverty in Sri Lanka. 
Amnesty International said in a new report on Tuesday that Sri Lankan authorities and the international community must fully incorporate human rights into their responses to the country's economic crisis. As people in the country face serious concerns around access to health care, whilst being driven to the brink of starvation, widespread malnourishment and deep poverty. The report, we are near total breakdown. Protecting the rights to health, food and social security in Sri Lanka's economic crisis explores the catastrophic impact of the crisis on the economic and social rights for the people of Sri Lanka. It added that the Sri Lankan authorities and donor states must ensure that they meet their obligations under international human rights law by safeguarding the rights to health and adequate food in all aid agreements. The government of Sri Lanka and international financial institutions must also conduct human rights impact assessments before implementing economic reforms. It remains unclear as to whether these have been or will be conducted. Human Rights Watch said that if India wants to support Sri Lanka, it must back extension of UN panel probing rights violations. Meenakshi Ganguly, the South Asia Director for Human Rights Watch, said that the recent protests, although sparked by the economic crisis, reflected a more united call for good governance and accountability. She noted that many Sri Lankans see constitutional reform and steps to address corruption, but this will need international support and action. A resolution currently before the UNHRC extends the mandate of a UN project to gather and analyze evidence of war crimes and other crimes under international law that have been committed in Sri Lanka and to prepare the evidence for use in possible future prosecutions. It also mandates the United Nations to continue monitoring and reporting on the country's economic and social rights crisis. The Human Rights Watch said that in order to support Sri Lankans who are calling for change and accountability, it is essential for India and other members of the Council to support the resolution. The 22nd Amendment to the Constitution Bill is to be debated in Parliament on the 6th and 7th of October. The new Constitutional Amendment will see the inclusion of some articles that were introduced in the 19th Amendment to the Constitution by the Government of Good Governance. One of these provisions is the dissolution of Parliament within two years of being elected. However, Parliamentarian Delan Pereira, speaking to News First, said that some of the articles that were approved by the Supreme Court are to be amended at the committee stage in Parliament in a devious effort to increase the period of dissolving Parliament to four and a half years. Parliamentarian Dilan Pereira joined the News First Ilakke program and revealed that at the Ministerial Consultative Committee on Justice today, the Justice Minister had noted that Sri Lanka Pondichana Pelamuna parliamentarians had made a request to increase the period of dissolving Parliament to four and a half years. He reprimanded the ruling faction for making such attempts, adding that these amendments have not been informed to the Supreme Court. Sri Lanka Army went through major transformations over the years. Tonight, we take a look at those transformations. Sri Lanka Army Living Legends. Sri Lanka Army has managed to bring down the government expenses without compromising national security at any cost. This is because the Sri Lanka Army has adopted the concept to produce the military requirements in-house. And for this purpose, Sri Lanka Army Ordnance Factory was set up in Vayangoda. The Sri Lanka Army Ordnance Factory produces most of the hardware that is used by the Sri Lanka Army. Sri Lanka used to import body armor. However, today, body armor is produced by the Sri Lanka Army Ordnance Factory. You might be surprised to know that the most costly equipment used by a soldier is the helmet. The Sri Lanka Army Ordnance Factory now produces the helmets, saving millions in foreign exchange. The Army Clothing Depot is another institution that provides a very important service to the military. Named as the Ranaviru Apparel Factory, it is located in Yakala and has a workforce of 1,500 personnel who are all from the Sri Lanka Army. At the same time, the Sri Lanka Army intervened to cultivate on unattended and abandoned paddy lands as part of a national drive. The Sri Lanka Army also launched a program to build farms across the country and some of them are located in KKS, Niravia, Kandakadu, Ridigama, Palatupala Patuna, Pangolla, Galkanda and Manik Farm. The Kandakadu Farm is supposed to be the largest. 
which spans across 1,240 acres and operates directly under the Sri Lanka Army Corps of Agriculture and Livestock. All the produce from this farm are used for the needs of the Sri Lanka Army and a portion is released to the local market and the people under a concessionary program. The Kandakadu farm is also instrumental in producing the much needed jungle ration pack for soldiers. The jungle ration pack was imported in the past at a very high cost and local production has saved the country a lot of money. Sri Lanka Army sportsmen and women, tomorrow. We'll bring you more news after this short commercial break. You're watching Primetime News on TV1. Here's a complete revolution. 25 for 50. Now, LB Finance introduces a high interest rate of 25% for your 50-day fixed deposits. LB Yasa Isuru, an unparalleled reward for a trusted deposit. Welcome back to the news. The high cost of sanitary towels forced many students to stay back at home rather than spend their time in schools. Tonight, we take a look at a social welfare program that aims to ensure the right for female students to attend school. Female sanitary care is often considered a topic that is taboo to be discussed openly in Sri Lanka. However, it is a matter that is widely discussed in the open globally. Special attention is now being drawn towards the sanitary facilities of the school students. Recently, all duties on imported raw material for domestically manufactured sanitary napkins were waived and ICL Brands, which is part of the Capital Maharaja Group, took steps to bring relief to those who need sanitary napkins the most. This project will ensure that sanitary napkins reach female students and is 100% supported by the Ministry of Education. So the message to the children is we have a product Eva Dreams at rupees 140 exclusive for the school children provided for them in the schools and we are working with the Education Ministry on this hand in hand. We have been doing in the last couple of years and this product will be available for them. Eva Sanitary napkins are produced to subject to the standards of the Sri Lanka Standards Institute, ISO 9001 and the National Medicines Regulatory Authority. May Eva Dreams. Eva Dreams is now available for school girls in Sri Lanka as a result of a valiant effort of the talented Eva R&D team. Eva has been the market leader in Sri Lanka for 35 years. We have immense pride in working with the brand. I believe this is of great service to society as I have a daughter myself. These sanitary napkins made for schoolgirls are made by female employees. I have been working here for 24 years. We women manufacture these sanitary napkins, taking utmost hygiene precautions. We take great pride in our work and we are sensitive to the needs of young women. We plan on distributing these packs to schools as well. Eva Dreams manufactured according to international standards with the utmost levels of hygiene are made available for school girls across the island at affordable prices from today. Today marks day 30 of the fourth edition of the Divisavia Social Welfare Program supported by LOLC Holdings. Day 30 of the fourth edition of the Divisavia Social Welfare Program took place at the Naradan Karte Divisional Secretariat in the Jaffna district. The objective of the program is to provide nutritious meals for low income earners in the country. Families that require assistance are identified and the essential relief packs are delivered to them under the Devisavia Social Welfare Program. That's a wrap of Primetime News on TV1 for tonight. I'm Charlotte Benedict for the News First Team. Until we meet again, take care and God bless.